Hey everybody, David Duford here at davidduford.com where I help insurance agents like you become top producing insurance professionals. And today I'm doing an exciting interview with an agent named Adam. Adam, if you will say hello, say hello. Hey guys. Adam is here because uh, he has, uh, in a sense, cracked the code when it comes to selling Medicare Advantage plans in a completely different way than you have ever heard of. And the purpose of today's interview is really just to explore exactly how his program works, the system works, and how he's been able to write 15 plus Medicare Advantage plans off season AEP throughout the year. So uh, again, Adam, welcome to the program. And a good way to Great start, to if you kind of could just give us a little information about yourself, a little background, and we'll get going. Hey guys, uh, my name is Adam Howard. I I'm a, uh, live in Michigan, just north of Detroit with my wife and uh, four kids. Uh, longtime sales veteran, uh, over a decade of experience in, in sales, uh, direct to consumer sales. I've literally sat at thousands and thousands of kitchen table appointments. Uh, and uh, currently selling Medicare Advantage at a, at a very, very high level, doing 15 to 20 uh, Medicare Advantage apps uh, every week, week in, week out. And that's, that's in the lock-in period outside of AEP. So uh, excited to be here. Uh, great to be on with Dave. Tell us a little bit about your process into getting into Medicare Advantage sales. It's kind of a unique story. Uh, you originally started out as a final expense agent. So can you kind of walk us through this process to where you are today? I did, yeah. I started out in uh, final expense uh, in uh, selling it at a, at a pretty, pretty high level, uh, and uh, it, typically four to five thousand a week. Uh, just twenty direct mail leads. I scaled it, uh, was hitting eight, nine, ten thousand a week in final expense. But I quickly saw that it was it was super transactional. So I had to continue to perform at a very high level if I wanted to continue with that level of income. And and and, and I realized from looking around different people in the industry that had been there longer than myself that that they were still having to go out and produce at a very high level even people that had started to build maybe you know a small agency they were still having to produce uh, so the freedom of time wasn't really there and, and I knew that wasn't something I, I really wanted uh, so I, I began looking at opportunities to you know, kind of pair something with what I was already doing and, and Medicare Advantage just just fit perfect with that so uh, I decided to kind of, kind of jump head first in, if you would, uh, into Medicare Advantage just because um, of the opportunity that, that it opposed. That was my initial draw to it was the opportunity uh, for the renewal income. It made perfect sense paired with final expense, good upfront money to try to build something on the back end that could uh, you know, give me a substantial uh, renewal stream long term. And that kind of leads us to the next question here is really what attracts you to Medicare Advantage or over final expense or any other. And it's that's that renewal passive income. Can you kind of expand on that and how it relates uh, so well to the Medicare Advantage field versus say something like final expense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. I think there's multiple ways it relates, but I think number one is that it's a product that, that pairs very well because it, 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 it correlates to the same consumer. It's the same consumer, uh, as a final expense client. So you're already sitting down if you're selling final expense with uh, the consumer that needs help with typically Medicare Advantage. Now, maybe there's some outliers and maybe they might be on a supplement, but typically 80, 90% of the time, they're on an Advantage plan or need an Advantage plan, right? So, so that was one thing I realized. Uh, and, and then just a substantial opportunity for the renewal income. It's the complete opposite of final expense where that's more upfront money with with Medicare Advantage, it's not quite as much upfront money, but it's a it's a pretty substantial renewal income per client, and it can start to snowball pretty quickly if you perform it at a high level, you know, like per se 10, 15 apps a week, very quickly. So uh, it it just seemed like a no brainer, uh, and it was just from there a matter of, uh, of of figuring out how to do it at a at a level that made sense for what 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 I wanted. Yeah. And, and I think that's going to be something real interesting we'll cover here in a minute is kind of how we're able to do this in a non-AEP uh, type of format. If you're never familiar with or never heard of Medicare Advantage or aren't very familiar with it, the season to sell it is typically October, November, and December. That period of time is when a ton of Medicare mailers and promotional materials go out. That is the official government-mandated free change exchange type of, uh, you know, a uh, period of time that you can make changes to your health care if you're a mm -hmm. Medicare recipient. Uh, but there are these opportunities, as we'll discuss briefly, 
later on that can allow you to sell Medicare Advantage all year long, which has always been the nut, the crack, really. And, and to do it and, it, it's, and how to find them. And the great thing, like you said, especially for you final expense out, agents out there, you saw me nod my head. Yeah, I'm sure you were too. You know that 80, 90% of your people are on Medicare Advantage plans and, and they can be flipped over uh, in, the certain, in, in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. So yep. describe to me getting started, Adam, what the first 90 days were like. You know, as far as, you know, I know there's a lot of people who've looked at Medicare Advantage. They look at the compliance requirements, the certification requirements, and, and some people just, it's overwhelming. Um, how was it actually like getting out there and selling it? How does it compare to, say, selling final expense? Easier, harder? Just kind of give me an overview of the first 90 days. It's a great question. And, and you know, I wasn't even thinking about the compliance aspect of it and getting started with certifications and, and things like that. Just because for me, uh, having a goal or having something that I want to get to and achieve, some of those things are just things you got to get through, right? If yeah. you focus in game and the end prize, honestly, it, it really wasn't a big deal. And I don't even, a lot of people fret that, but it was not a big deal at all. But, but yeah, I guess it's something I should talk about. So, so I happened to pass the AHIP. That was something I did real quick when I was months before I, I ever even had made the decision to do advantage. I had actually done it a couple months prior to making the decision to pursue advantage instead of supplements. And actually what's funny is I had made a decision that I was going to begin selling med subs and cross selling final expense to those clients. When I had heard a presentation on, on Medicare advantage and the opportunity and how we're, how well it paired with final expense. And that's when I made kind of the shift in my thinking and really started to uh, learn more about it, learn how I could market it. So first 90 days, I'll answer your question, get the AHIP done, carrier certifications. I began reaching out to uh, carrier reps. Uh, each one of the carriers typically have a, uh, you know, some sort of product rollout, usually a webinar or, or some of them do face to face. So I made sure that I was attending those and, and establishing a relationship with, with the carrier reps and letting them know what I already was doing. So letting them know, listen, I, because I knew it, it paired so well with what I was already doing. I was able to communicate, listen, I'm a guy that's writing eight, nine, 10,000 a week in final expense. I'm sitting down with tons of these people and they need advantage, right? And so it's a perfect fit. So I relayed the concept that, listen, I'm going to be producing at a high level. I'm not doing it right now, but I, I, I showed them that I knew what I was talking about. I knew my market. And, and that allowed me to establish some good relationships with them so that I could reach out by phone if I had a question. And I think that really helped spurhead me and, and, and slow the learning curve down, shorten it a little bit. Um, so that was the big part of the, the initial, you know, delving into it first 90 days was getting those things done. Right. Uh, and, and then if, if you want to talk about the first 90 days of actually going out and selling, I think that kind of it would be a great place to start as well. And, and, yeah. And yeah. Why don't you expand on that right now? I think that's a great transition. Go ahead. And, and so, yeah. So after I had got that out of the, out of the way, established relationships and, 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 and people that I could kind of lean on for some advice, cause I was really kind of just running at it blindly. Right. So, uh, what I, what I began doing was selling to my existing book of business. I, I had been selling final expense at a high level. So it made perfect sense uh, from, from the knowledge I had learned, people I'd talked to, books I'd read, that I could reach out to them compliantly without having to do any special marketing, right? Just right. reach out to them and get in front of them. So I began doing that, and I, and I thought as well it would be a great way to learn Medicare Advantage. I've already got a relationship with these people. They trust me. Um, if I, I got to make a call to somebody in the house and, you know, I, and, they, and I don't necessarily know the answer, they're not going to get mad at me, right? They're not going to get me out of the house. So it was a safe place to learn. And so I started doing that. And that was about halfway through AEP uh, at that point. And I think I had wrote 50 or so. But that was, I would say, pretty much the first 90 days was selling to my existing book and getting a good foundation so that I had encountered enough situations uh, where I would you know, know the answers to those as they came up in the future. And, that and look, looking back to where you are now, mm -hmm. you know, arguably – working your book is easier uh, than say a cold lead or just a lead. Uh -huh. Looking back now, is this something you think somebody with no book of business could do with the right kind of lead program and, and help people in all the same way, even if they don't have a book of business? It's a great question. It's a great question. I teach agents that they should 
start with final expense first and cross out of their book. That's how I, I've told everybody I've talked to, that's the way you should do it for sure. I, I think if somebody's got an existing foothold in already selling advantage and they've already got, you know, a number of policies under the belt, it makes sense to maybe uh, take a look at your marketing plan and maybe try to improve that, get in front of more people and find out where your errors are, what, what, what you can do to improve, make it more efficient. But I, I think starting with selling final expense and, se- and then, and then cross selling through your existing book, 110% is the way to start. Definitely. So you like guys getting into final expense just as, as the old fashioned way to do it is at what point is it, do you want an agent to start looking at selling Medicare Advantage? Is it the six month, 12 month period? What do you like based on your experience? And I think that's a tough question to answer because every agent, as you know, is, is different and picks things up at, at a different pace, right? Some learn a little sure. slower, faster. And so I, I would, I would, I think the answer to that is really once an agent feels like mastered and, and I guess to, to some degree, we've never mastered anything, right? We're always learning, but right. having a good, strong foundation to where you can, you know, you can continue, you can sell at a high level consistently with final expense. Right. I think at that point, it makes sense to then look at learning a new product, right? Cause you don't want to have product overload and get confused and, you know, if you haven't mastered one thing, you have no business adding something else. It's the way I look at it. Right. So once I had the foundation, that's when I decided to delve into that. And I think that is a, a good way to answer that. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell us how the first Medicare Advantage sales presentation went. What was it like? <laughs> that's, it, it's funny you ask. And, and I still remember to this day because it, it blew my mind. Uh, it was an existing client, final expense client. And uh, I went back and saw her and went through the presentation, explained the summary of benefits, checked doctors, made sure medications were covered on the formulary. Uh, I went, went, you know, had a scope signed, of course, before any of that was done. And, but, but went line by line through everything you're supposed to do for a compliant presentation. And, and it lasted maybe 45 minutes. Uh, uh, maybe I was a little bit long-winded at, at, at first, but uh, completed the sale. And I remember leaving the house and calling the, this, this one carrier rep that, that I, it helped me quite a bit in the beginning. And, and I said, I think I might've done something wrong. I think there's something that wasn't done right here because, uh, you know, I, me being a final expense agent, I'm used to, you know, phone interviews, maybe the client, you know, doesn't get approved, yeah. all these different, right. I just, you know, push back from the client sometimes. And, and it was just too easy. It didn't, it, something didn't make sense. And he laughed when I told him that he said, no, I explained what I did. He laughed. He said, no, that's it. That's, that's it. You did everything right. That's all you got to do. And, and from that point on, it was like, it turned a light bulb on. I said, well, I got to do this at a higher level. I got, I got to really start. <laughs> I got to see a lot of people. And, and, and also why is everybody else not doing it? That that's still at this point is a question. I still ask. I just don't understand why everybody isn't doing it to, to, to be honest. It, it's, it's not as scary as everybody makes it out to be. Uh, yeah. This was a learning curve. But it's such a great opportunity. Sure. Sure. And, and one thing I've talked at length about and will, really into my 2020 content is the importance of, like you said, building a passive income. And if you're not into recruiting agents and being an adult babysitter, then you should probably consider selling some renewal type of product. And for a lot of you guys out there, you're final expense agents and you're sitting in front of nine out of 10 of your leads that are Medicare Advantage eligible, many of which can be flipped, if not immediately, sometime at the end of the year when uh, it's open season. So, Let's transition to talking about what it is that you do now, because there's kind of a sense that you started off working your book of business and then kind of worked your way into a different system. Now, this is a proprietary system, so I'm giving Adam as much comfort that he wants to explaining how it works. So if you could kind of go into the marketing process, how you generate leads, and what your sales presentation is like in as much detail as you'd like, just to give the audience an idea of how you make this an ongoing year long uh, sales and prospecting activity. Great question. So, so starting out, as I'd already explained, I, I started selling to my existing book and, and then I realized if I wanted to sell more, I could, you know, buy more final expense leads, get in front of more people and, and continue doing it that way. But it, it, it does take more time and to do it that way. And you can't, it's more difficult to write a high number of policies. So I started doing research, talking to a number of people and just, you know, info gathering at that point. And I really just enjoy learning. So I'm just a sponge. I just, wherever I can get information, I'm, I'm, I'm soaking it up. And, and so 
I started looking at ways that you can market uh, for Medicare, right? Generic opportunities and, and found, you know, direct mail and, and Facebook and started experimenting with different ad copies for both. Uh, you know, so, so creating leads for Facebook, uh, also for direct mail and experiment with different ad copies and, and began dropping mail and, and doing what I called Medicare Monday and Tuesdays. Those were my Medicare days and I still sold final expense. So I started doing that and, and then started writing eight to 10 apps a week or so doing that just in those two days. And so then, the, then at that point I was like, well, why don't I just scale this up? So that's when I took it to four days in the field uh, doing, doing the same thing, direct mail, Facebook leads, and, uh, and that's how I was starting to hit these high numbers that I'm hitting now. So to answer your question, it, it's, it's a blend of, of direct mail and Facebook leads. And, and yeah, there's, there's exclusive, you know, ad copy um, that, that is used for both. It's very similar for both. Uh, and it targets a specific, uh, you know, audience that, that gets me in front of people that typically will have some sort of a special election period, right? So uh, an opportunity to make a change. Uh, or some sort of enrollment throughout the year. Um, and, and I work four days a week in the field, uh, and, I, and I run hard, though. So it's, I'm not just you know, running three or four appointments a day. These are typically eight appointment days, Monday through Thursday. So I, I, I'm generating a lot of leads, uh, typically 50-plus leads a week, and I do use an, excuse me, an appointment setter uh, to obviously give me more time doing what I do best, which is helping seniors. Um, so she generates, uh, you know, the call sets the appointments for me and, and, and I, and I run usually about 30 to 35 appointments a week between four days. Um, so that's kind of, that's, that's kind of the system and what I do. And, and but here's the thing that, that I realized is if, if you're running a final expense lead, to be honest with you, that that's one of the best leads you can use, to be honest with you, to get in front yeah. of people. a final expense lead is phenomenal. Um, but for me, I just wanted to focus more on you know, the advantage. So I, I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with just even purchasing a final expense lead, you know, but I, but I think there are a little fat, a little bit faster ways to do it. And that's kind of what, what I've kind of developed here is just a faster way to do it. I just, I just looked at an end, the end goal and kind of worked backwards, you know, what, what's my activity need to look like? How many leads do I need to generate? How can I do that? And, and it was just a fact finding mission uh, at that point. And so I spent a lot of time the first few months tweaking things, right? The plan, do, check, and adjust. I mean, a lot of adjustment made, tweaking ad copy, you know, demographics, things like that um, to come up with what is consistently working now. Um, so I hope that, hope that answers your question. If you want to ask me a couple more questions, uh, anything specific? Uh, I would think, I think it's safe to say you're not working a changes in Medicare generically at this point, right? You're just a little bit more targeted. Yeah, it's it's more targeted and it's kind of kind of kind of complex. It's kind of a multifaceted lead, to be honest with you. Um, but but yeah, it's it's yeah, not 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 really just a typical, you know, generic generic lead. No. Mm -mm. And, and are you coming in? Do they know it's about Medicare? Because you know how it is a final expense. Sometimes there's confusion. Is this free? Uncle Sugar giving me another benefit? What what's the reception like when you're running? It, it's phenomenal. But 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 at the same time, what what's funny is, you still get people that for whatever reason they just. They just don't know what's going on. I don't think they know. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, it's funny. It's funny talking about this. I think, I think it's not a final expense lead issue. It might be a final expense people issue. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they just exactly. don't know what's going on, period. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, you know, I mean, you, I still once in a while, it's, it's definitely rare, but you get somebody that, you know, hey, this costs you no money. It actually saves you money and you get extra benefits and you don't right. want it. I'm confused. Yeah. You know, you still run into stuff that doesn't make any sense. It's just unfathomable. But I think it's just dealing, like you said, with the market. Right, you know? right, right, right. So it, it, it just, there is, a, I mean, it's a high level activity. I, I'm, I'm working consistently at a very high level, a lot of activity, a lot of leads, um, but I'm consistent with everything that I'm doing throughout. Uh, and I think a lot of, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just curious. Is your, you, what you're doing now is it daytime appointments, nighttime appointments. Do you have to work evenings with Medicare? I guess you wouldn't, or do you, what's, how do you run it? I, I, I'm a guy that whenever they need me to be there, I'm going to be there. So there are some six, seven o'clock appointments I'll run, but I'm just mm -hmm. doing it on those Monday through Thursday days. Right. But, but, but if the client wants me there at seven o'clock, I'm going to be there, you know, so sure. I'm still spending a lot of my time and uh, you know, kind of more at the mercy of the client. Sure. Instead of my schedule.
just paying paying your dues, paying the price. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And you go right yep. in, and you they. I mean, you, you go right into a Medicare presentation. Is that what you focus on now? Are you thinking about final expense at this point with the kind of change in marketing you're doing? I'm focused on Medicare in general and helping them any way I can. So, so really, when I come in, my my typical my typical line is, you know, what well, were you hoping I could help you with? That's that's really it's it's that that's simple. Uh, and, and from there, the conversation ensues, and I find out I just I'm very good at doing a fact find and, and and peeling the onion. I would say, right? The onion right. has multiple layers. You can ask one question, but that leads to another one, and you dig deeper and deeper. Find the need. I think is the big thing. I'm very good at finding the need, what it is the client needs and wants. And, and then I, my job is to help whatever that might be, whether they need help, maybe applying for Medicaid, maybe they need help with a low income subsidy, maybe they need, whatever it might be, they need help with, I'm there to help, you know? So I find the need and I don't come in with a preconceived notion of I'm going to sell an advantage plan. I write a, a number of med, med subs as well, a lot of underwritten med subs. So whatever the client needs help with, I'm going to help them. But in regards to final expense, no, I, I don't really, what's funny is I don't really even ask about it, uh, but I still write a number of policies where people actually ask me, they say, hey, do you do that? Right. Very and so I'm literally writing applications where they're asking me for it. And it's kind of a total 180 from what we're used to selling final expense. Right. Uh, it blew my mind the first couple of times it happened. Uh, I, I asked them, I followed up a couple are you sure you, you, you want this? <laughs> You have a bank account and you want to pay for this. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, Believe it or not. Yeah. So, I think there's a lot more. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Finish your thought. There's just a lot more opportunity there. I just don't really look for it. You know, I, I just am focused primarily on, on, on obviously finding and helping them, but then helping with, with Medicare. Right. So when you started this approach, was there any initial adversity? I mean, is there any difficulty, would you say, in getting up and running? If so, explain kind of what you went up against. Good question. I think that, I think uh, I think the biggest adversity was filtering through uh, faulty information, faulty people giving me information. You know, certain people that uh, I've talked to. You know, guys that have sold Medicare longer than I have. Uh, and to be honest with you, what's funny is there's a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. It's the truth of it. So filtering through bad information, people that are doing things incorrectly. Uh, and so trying to find the, the right information in separating from the bad information, uh, like I said, initially it was a huge fact finding mission for me, finding out how I could do it compliantly. Um, so it was, it was a, a ton of networking, a lot of talking to carrier reps and just different people already in the industry and having to filter through, like I said, bad information. There are a lot of agents that are doing things wrong out there and, when they get caught, they're gonna, they're not they're not going to be in the industry longer. So, um, so I think that was the biggest uh, challenge. But again, I love learning, and I love I I think I love the climb. I, I love learning and getting to the destination. So it, it wasn't really even a concern. It was just maybe it, it just slowed it down. It slowed down my production. Sure. Slowed down what it been uh, developing what I'm doing now. So it, again, uh, I, I don't call it. It's just like with anything in life, you know, you have, you got to learn, you know, it takes time and it's not going to be, you know, easy breezy all the time. So I wouldn't call it adversity. It was just, uh, like I said, tip the typical way you'd learn anything, just fact find. So hope that makes sense. I, I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but yeah, no. So the, the one other question that I ask you, and you kind of mentioned this earlier, when we talked about the compliance thing and I remember us talking about this in Chattanooga when you came down, it's like, it's like, so what compliance? It's like, it's what you do, man. You know, if you want to get it, you get it. You know, it's just part of the deal. And this mm -hmm. is the question about, you know, why do you think you've been so successful so soon after starting Medicare? We're talking at least what about a year now you've been doing it. What, what accounts for your success? And this can be more generic um, and specific. Uh, agents who want to duplicate what you do, what do they need from a character standpoint, from leads, from just anything? I think the biggest reason I've been able to be successful is, like I said, I, 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 I like to fashion myself as, a, as really a lifetime learner, somebody that loves to learn uh, and loves to, to grow. And, 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 and so seeing a challenge, something I don't know or, or, or you know, understand, uh, for me, it kind of excites me. So I want to learn about it. So having that, that type of personality, I think helped me, uh, but also having a, 
knowing what it was that I wanted. I think a lot of agents and really people in general don't know what it is they're wanting. So they go without a goal or they're kind of just get blown about by the breeze, whatever happens. And so being able to, to recognize early on selling final expense at a very high level that and look down the road, uh, which is difficult for a lot of people to do, especially in our society, microwave society. I want it now. We look short term, but be able to look long term and say, in five, six, seven years, what if I continue to do this, what will things look like? And kind of perceive that and say, that, that's not what I want. What do I want? I want to have a, a large standard income that is passive so that I can have my time. And I knew that final right. expense by itself was probably not the right vehicle for me. So uh, then, then learning about Medicare and then being able to, to see that what, how, what do I want out of the, what, what levels do I want to hit? How many policies do I want to sell? And then being able to truly grasp that, truly take hold of it. That's what I want and find a way to get there. I think without, without your why, you can't find the how. So having, having the why allowed me to find the how. And I think that's right. anything. I really believe that. So yeah. having those two, having, having the trait, like I said, of just being a lifetime learner, loving to learn and, and loving. It's like, it's competition almost. I was a college athlete and I just love, you know, anytime there was an obstacle, you just want to get better, right? Just overcome right. it. So I kind of look at it almost like that. And, and then uh, being a good goal setter and and, and focused, uh, my wife will tell you, I, I'm somebody that like, I just don't give up typically until I get it. I guess that's how I married my wife. I just, she's like, I just got to marry. I won't give up. Right. So, <laughs> so basically I basically just that, gave up. She right. gave up. <laughs> gave up saying no. <laughs> uh, I hope that, yeah, I hope that's yeah, right. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, I think, I think that that would be the answer to the question. And I, I hope that doesn't sound too, uh, cliche, but I really think that is the reason. So I think any, new agent, anybody that maybe is an existing agent to be successful, as long as they're coachable, they've got the work ethic, they know what it is they want, and they're ready to, to dive in and kind of make a decision. You know, when you decide, I always thought this was kind of cool, homicide, suicide, pesticide. And I don't want to take it a rant, but, but that IDE means to put to death, right? So when you decide, you put to death Man. all other options. So you right. make a commitment, you're going to do it. And that's what I did. And so I think if you're coachable, you can make a decision to do it. You're going to be successful, especially with a system that's already been a trail that's been blazed. Now it's a matter of just plugging in. That's the exciting thing. I went through all the, the hard stuff initially, figure, you know, tweaking everything, figuring it out. With something that you can follow, if you've got those couple attributes, you, right. you can be successful at a high level. So last question of the day, what's your long-term aspirations at this point? Where do you want to take this? this thing you've got that's been working so well? Well, I want to continue to do what I'm doing, obviously, and, and, and personally produce at a very high level. And, and, and my goal is to have, uh, you know, a very high renewal income monthly here in just a few few years. Uh, but but also at this point, really to, to help mentor and train, you know, other other agents that want to uh, perform at a higher level. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they're already selling Medicare Advantage and they're just like, hey, I've been doing it for eight years. And I, I've talked to many people like this. And they're, you know, they think selling three or four policies a week is just incredible. And it's not that it's bad, right? But if if somebody has higher goals and aspirations, uh, help people like that get to where they want to go because, you know, they can get there. Uh, and then also help people that, that maybe are just selling final expense and, and, and realize, hey, you know, I really think, like you said, I need to add an additional product that will help me uh, grow a retirement you know, monthly, uh, monthly type of a pension per se right. that, that'll right. be monthly, you know? So, uh, that's my goal is, is like to continue doing what I'm doing, produce at a high level and then help others get to where they want to go. Uh, I think that's super exciting to see, um, uh, you know, people kind of, kind of see it catch on and, and start to produce at a high level. That's super exciting for me. Well, let me kind of transition from there, Adam, and kind of describe to you what we're doing. Um, this is a big push that we have in, in the organization I'm a part of. Uh, we really, with Adam's help, feel like we have a, a, a fantastic opportunity, especially for final expense agents, that know Medicare Advantage is out there, 
they want a renewal based income that's not necessarily built upon working every single day in order to get that income. And they want a system that's already been tested and proven to work. We've got that system now from the sales and strategy training to the lead generation process. We have an entire sales and marketing system that if this is something you're interested in, you can implement as well. Adam's on our team. We've got a lot of other people getting involved in this. And this is, again, in a big picture sense, especially for those of you guys that have been doing final expense for a while, the beauty of the insurance business is the ability to generate a passive income, or at least the opportunity to. And, and you have to understand, as Adam is understanding now and will continue every single year, what this type of business opportunity allows you to do is it buys the most precious asset you have back, your time. You have four kids, Adam. I have four kids. I'm with my children every night. I'm with my wife every night. You know what it's like to sell final expense, grinding it out five, six days a week, hardly home. You know, this is a different uh, horizon here. And does it mean you can just start this and not work? Obviously, Adam's working his ass off still. But for the long-term benefit of not having to if he wants to, to spend the time, that precious time with the people he loves. And uh, the, the, that's what makes us so great. Uh, and I say this not as a Medicare Advantage agent, but I've done this very thing through building my own agency. So I make a passive income. So I understand conceptually this. And what's great about this opportunity is for the vast majority of agents out there, recruiting is not going to be something <laughs> many want to do. And there is a personal production way to achieve the same things I have through the system Adam's talking about. So I highly, highly uh, recommend if you haven't looked at this to give this some serious thought to take action on something like this because this will change your life. Um, it will give you the freedom and the income too uh, to really just enjoy your, your life, your profession, your family, everything that you value. Mm -hmm. Yep. Dave, can I say this? I, you know, yeah. just, just, some people are probably wondering, they're like, well, this guy hasn't been doing it very long. You know, how, what, what kind of success does really have? After the short time that I've been doing it, <clears throat> I've already got a very healthy six-figure renewal income after a very short period of time. And, and, and everybody's goal is going to look different. Maybe that is somebody's goal. Maybe that's what they want to achieve. Um, for me, as I said, I want to continue to grow that. But in that short of a period of time, and that was not even producing it at as high of a level as I am now, right? Because that was part of it was blending and working things out, figuring it all out. Right. Um, so literally within a year's time, working the right system with the right training, the right compliance training, so you make sure you do it right and don't lose all this in four years, five years, right? Because you do it wrong. You can have a very healthy six-figure renewal income. And, and that, that is a fact. I mean, I'm living proof of it. That's, I just wanted to kind of, early testimony. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that if you're not already doing it and you've thought about this, you need to, uh, it's, it's well worth the time and investment and it can happen at the pace that you want to. Uh, it just depends of course on your commitment and discipline. So, uh, Adam, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. And, uh, if you guys have any questions, what I would recommend you to do is you can leave a comment below. That's certainly fine. I'll be happy to answer it. You can also go to my website at daviddoford.com. Click the contact link at the box or at the top of the box or top of the menu. And then just fill out a form and say, hey, Dave, I'm interested in the Medicare Advantage program we talked about with Adam. And we can set up a time to discuss more of how this would work and how to get you helped out. From the, even if you're not licensed yet, that's totally fine. Um, even if you don't even know where to start, you got your health license, you looking at what a hip is about and all this credentialing will help you through every step of the way. We know exactly what to do, exactly the steps to take. And we've got everything lined out for you. Just if you follow it, we can get you into a position to where you can just go out and see people like Adam is. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for joining and, uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.